The frog that I'm copying is a ferrule which is almost 10 millimeters deep. So I'll cut a piece off that's 10 millimeters wide. that's 0.8 millimeters thick and that will form the curved top surface. So I'll cut this also to one centimeter wide. Up that edge. The silver comes with a protective sheet a blue layer on it which I'm going to remove now. The ferrule is going to be 14 and a half millimetres wide. This is obviously a long way over that, so I'm just going to trim it down, down to about 16 or something like that. I'll keep it slightly oversized for reasons um, which will become obvious later. The, the saw is a jeweler's saw, has a very, very fine cutting blade. It's very fragile, but at the same time it cuts thin materials very well. You've got so many teeth to the centimetre that uh, even cutting a thin piece of material you get several teeth engaging with it and that just makes it much easier to control, much smoother to work with. This offcut goes in the scrap box full of scrap silver. Look at that. Worth a fortune. And now I just take a former to shape this. I just do this by, by hand uh, to an extent. I just put this this tapered mandrel, which I just put the silver over and bend it. It's easy to bend the middle, it's not so easy to bend the edges, so I'll have to use a hammer just to bend that over. Let's take a mallet. Starting to get our ferrule shape. It's still too wide and it's too high. I'm getting, getting close to the right sort of curvature. It just sits on top of the original one. You can see how thin the original ferrule is. I prefer to keep mine a little bit thicker than that just to give them strength. That's 7.2. Right, it's about 6.8. And the curved part is 15.2, so it's still too high and too wide. The height's right, the width is not far off, so a bit of tidying up and we should be pretty much there. It's now the right width here and it's 6.3 so when I finish the, the edges I should just bring it down to 6.2. Almost there. So now I just put the two parts together, just measure it and I've got 6.1 on the top, 14.1 on the curved part, so allowing for that curve to continue slightly into the bottom piece, we should make, make our full-sized ferrule. Final part is to get the solder itself. I'm just going to cut a piece of solder off the stock here. We really don't need much solder to do the joints if the joints are close fitting, so we've got enough solder here for both sides. So I'll just take some binding wire, which I'll use to hold the parts together while I'm soldering them. And then wrap the wire around. And this is where it becomes clear why I've left the bottom part of the ferrule wider than the finished size. And that's because it helps to hold the wire away from the soldering joints. And so it doesn't get stuck to the ferrule. Now I get some flux and something to apply the flux with. I'll use this old and rather worn out scalpel blade. Just around the surfaces. This will run in into the cracks as it heats up and, and melts. Now just cut these 
in half. There we are. And now we just have to position them on the fire brick underneath the ferrule. I want them to stand just underneath where the seams will be. And you can see how the flux is boiling away. Keep the flame moving around the ferrule. Heat it all up evenly. And the ferrule will go to quite a strong red colour. The solder is starting to melt. There it goes, both sides. Just let the solder run up all the way and switch off. And now I can take the ferrule and quench it. I should be able to take off the wire now without it having stuck to the ferrule. And put this on the mandrel now. Start, start shaping it. Now we're getting our ferrule into shape. So a little bit of neatening up each side. And there we have the ferrule ready to mount on the frog.